so I thought we would make a little update. It's been a couple of weeks since we've been cycling. We're currently in a town called Rio Gashagos, which is probably the windiest place <laughs> we've ever been. Um, we started cycling this morning with the name to do 50k. To and a campsite. To a campsite. And we walked about 10k into a headwind and are now in the most depressing hotel in the world. <laughs> And we've been to a and few we've been to a couple hotels. of really depressing hotels. Um, and you fell over when you were just walking with your bike. I don't think I've ever fallen off my bike when I haven't been on my bike. Tim fell off whilst just free wheeling. It was pretty crazy. There's like ninety, a hundred kilometer an hour winds at the moment, which turns out is impossible to cycle in. It's too much for cycling. It's too much for cycling. Um, it's been a pretty crazy couple of weeks. Um, we probably haven't done as much cycling as we wanted to do. Lots of hiccups along the way, but, um, I mean, it started out very, very nicely. We flew into Usaya, which is the southernmost city in the world. And it was pretty cold, but it had this amazing uh, like view of the mountains from the from the city and from the plane when we were coming in and from the plane as well it was pretty crazy I never seen anything like it um, and we did a couple of hikes in Usaya climbed some mountains and then just set off north really um, which was also really beautiful it was a bit windy but like was fine really looking back and looking back out, it was it fine at the time windy. we thought it was windy but we didn't know what wind was um it was like these crazy mountain roads lakes. with snowy yeah beautiful lakes um with just like incredible snowy peaks in the background it was so nice and our first night we camped next to this lake with loads of middle-aged fishermen catching trout went for a swim went for the coldest swim in the world probably no it wasn't <laughs> <laughs> it was probably 10 times as cold as Perrinporth winter no it wasn't <laughs> um had a lovely night camping it was very nice had a few lovely camp spots actually after a swire didn't we yeah um where did we camp second night I can't remember I think also by a lake yeah, 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 we had a water feature. It's crazy how all the days just like meld into one. Yeah. Um, and then eventually we got to Rio Grande, which is the world's most underwhelming city. Um, just as like a big storm hit, it was like super cold, really windy, really wet. And we stayed in this really depressing <laughs> Hostel where Phoebe lost all of her, <laughs> all of her items. They got stolen by the owner. <laughs> <laughs> no, I went back for them and he had given them away to some small children. Yeah, which is fair enough because he didn't know that we were going to come back. Yeah, but it was when we got to Rio Grande that we realised that um, we weren't able to cross any land borders into Chile, um, which was a bit complicated. There's a bit of a complicated border system between Argentina and Chile where the road kind of weaves between both borders. So you have to keep crossing the Argentina-Chile border um, to travel north. There's only one road that goes north and you can't really avoid it, especially as where we were is on an island, Tierra del Fuego. And um, you have to go into Chile to get off the island. To get but off. although we aren't allowed to cross the borders, neither are any Argentinians or Chileans, yeah, which seems very unfair. So the Argentinians who live on the island are just stuck, really. Yeah. Um, but we found a weird loophole where you can, if you leave the same day, if you're just passing through, then it's fine. So it's either to get off the island, you can either fly or you can take a long bus. So we somehow managed to squeeze our bikes, which was pretty outrageous. 
into Tim, a very small corner of the bus. Tim was very deep in this like luggage carriage <laughs> of a bus. Um, just like squeezing all our bikes in, moving everyone's luggage around. And we took this like 12 hour long bus. It's probably a five hour journey, but you have to go through four border stops. You have to go through the, the Argentinian border, then the Chile border, then another Chile border, and then another Argentinian border. With a ferry border, in the middle. With a ferry in the middle. Which was very exciting. Which was oh, very exciting. Oh, we just got flayed sponge. And yeah. it took absolutely ages. Go on, scrub it. Um, but we finally made it through, and now <laughs> we can stay in Argentina for a pretty long time. Argentina stretches really far north, um, and hopefully restrictions are going to change. Go a bit. Um, in a month or so. Yeah. Hopefully end of November, end of December, there should be some restriction changes. So basically as soon as we can nip across the border, the land border, we will, and then start following the coast of Chile up north. Um, and we're even starting to plan a bit further on from that. Yeah. So, um, what we're going to head east over the Andes, see some flamingos. Into Bolivia. Yeah. Into Peru. Yeah. Go past La Paz. Um, but that's quite a few months away really, isn't it's it? A, and right now it feels like a, right a long way feels... away considering we're doing 10 kilometer walks per day. Um, yeah, at the moment it's, um, I think spirits are low, Whoa, but also... speak for yourself. <laughs> but We're also doing what positive. we have to do. Yeah, exactly. We're doing what we have to do. It wasn't very safe walking along the side of the dual carriageway in 90 no, it was probably so had to stop. the scariest rising. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Really so, hopefully the next two weeks we'll, we'll be able to make much more progress um, towards the beautiful bit before yeah exactly um tim's writing a very good blog um which everyone should read um we've also got a dot watcher yeah, it's a bit temperamental. If a bit of a temperamental dot watcher, but that's pretty exciting if you are bored at work and want to follow a dot on a map. And yeah, I guess that's about it. Yeah. I think that's about it, yeah.